Okay, good morning or afternoon guys, depending. So this video is about how to use the information about genetic diseases to type, uh, to make and solve a Punnett square. So first thing, we're going to do the recessive diseases first. So if we look here, and I thought making it big font was going to work really well, but all right, so all recessive disease Punnett squares, they follow the same rule. First of all, both parents must give you the recessive allele. I use A as default here, but it could be whatever. Um, a recessive allele. So both parents have to give the child a recessive allele for them to have a recessive disease. The genotype of a carrier, carriers, genotype of a carrier is a heterozygote. So you have one capital allele and one lowercase allele. And all carriers are healthy. So that's what you were learning about yesterday in the genetic disease data table notes. Now, our first problem is right here with South Central. Mr. Cannon has shared with one of my prior classes that he is a carrier for sickle cell anemia. So what is the genotype for Mr. Cannon? Well, we know that a carrier is a heterozygote. And if we go ahead and use ACE for the sickle cell anemia, Mr. Cannon is this. He's a carrier for sickle cell. We also know from yesterday notes that a carrier for sickle cell is immune to getting malaria. So if Mr. Cannon wanted to travel to Africa to visit, he would not have to get a vaccine to give him temporary immunity to malaria for the trip. The doctor would simply take his passport and stamp immune on his passport. That was pretty cool. Now, Mr. Cannon, let's find out about his children. His wife does not or doesn't carry the sickle cell alleles. So if sickle cell is a recessive disease and the, the recessive allele is the one that is mutated, so that gene is mutated, if his wife doesn't have the sickle cell alleles, what must the genotype of Mrs. Cannon be? Well, hopefully he thought capital letters. So that's Mrs. Cannon's genotype. So now we have their genotypes. What percent chance do their five children, and yes, they have five kids, have of getting sickle cell? Well, we have to draw a Punnett square, and we have to set up the mom and dad's genes, Mr. and Mrs. Cannon's um, genes. So it doesn't matter which goes where, so I'm just going to put Mr. Cannon on top of the box and Mrs. Cannon on the side of the box. So if we complete the Punnett square, what goes in this box? Big A comes over, this capital A, big A comes down. What goes in this box? Capital A, lowercase a. What goes in this box over here? Capital A, lowercase a. And what goes in this box over here? Capital A, lowercase a. Now, what percent chance do they have of getting sickle cell? Well, remember, sickle cell is a recessive disease. So, both parents have to give you the little a to have it. Are there any boxes in here that say little a? The answer is no. So not both little a's. This, even though this these two boxes are carriers, they're not going to have it because a carrier is healthy because of the capital A. So Mr. Cannon's children have a 0% chance to have sickle cell. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many children they have, none of them are going to have sickle cell because of Mrs. Cannon. Okay, so let's switch to another situation. Taekwon has sickle cell. All right, so what is Taekwon's genotype? If he has a recessive disease, you have to have, that's little a, is the disease or mutated. So Taekwon must be little a, little a. Taekia is a carrier for sickle cell. 
So what's the genotype of a carrier again? You have to know this. It is big A, little a, because a carrier is healthy. Okay, but they carry the disease. They could give it to their babies. All right, so the question says, what percent of offspring from Taekwon and Takia will have sickle cell anemia? I'm going to move that over here. And try to... All right, so again, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to, by potluck choice, put the little A's on the from Taekwon on the side of the box. And Taekia is going to be here. Okay, so if we fill in the box, okay, we have big A, little a. This box over here is two little a's. This box here, two little a's. And this box, big A, little a. So what percent chance will they have of having a child with sickle cell? Well, sickle cell is a recessive disease. So which two boxes here are going to have sickle cell? If we say these two, because it is a recessive disease, that is 50% will have a chance to have sickle cell. And sickle cell, that's the phenotype. So basically, every time Taekwon and Takia have a child, they are going to have a 50% chance to have a baby with sickle cell. So what should they do? Well, when the, the baby is born, um, they can, pay, they can, most insurance companies will pay to have the test. Um, if not, I have to admit, I don't know how much the test would cost, but they would have to have the baby tested to know if the baby has sickle cell. And in this country, very few people die from sickle cell because there are medications that can control it. Okay. All right. So now let's do another recessive disease. Both Mark and Lisa are carriers for cystic fibrosis. So they're both carriers. So what's the genotype of a carrier again? Carriers are heterozygotes. So if we do both parents heterozygotes, okay, and it says what percent of the offspring will not have CF? Not have. So be careful you look at what is asked for. Well, if we fill in the Punnett square, this box is two big A's. This box is a big A and a little a. What's this box over here? And this box over here. Okay. So what percent will not have CF? Well, cystic fibrosis is a recessive disease. So it is the little letter that is going to be mutated. There's an error in the DNA. So what does that mean? Well, to have the disease, you have to have two little a's. So this box has the disease. But the question says, what will not have? Well, these three boxes right here all have a capital A in them. So these three boxes, 75% chance will not have CF. So the answer to this question is 75% because these will all be healthy. Okay. So let me switch my pages. And let's do some of the other recessive diseases. All right. So let's start out. Okay. So it says here, Jimmy, Jimmy has sickle cell anemia and his partner doesn't have the CF alleles. It's okay, baby boy. Jimmy has sickle cell, so he is little a, little a, because it's a recessive disease. His partner doesn't have the CF alleles, so that means he is big A, big A. So what percent will have cystic fibrosis? So it doesn't matter, again, how we put the letters, but this is our box. This is the, 
the parent who doesn't have the sickle cell alleles, and this is Jimmy. He's got sickle cell. Well, when you fill in the boxes, okay, all of them are heterozygotes. Well, are these going to be healthy, or are they going to have, um, whoops, we did sickle cell here and cystic fibrosis here. Let's just say this is sickle cell, okay? So what percent will have sickle cell? Well, it's going to be 0%, none of them, because every box has a capital allele, and sickle cell is a recessive disease. So the only way to get it is for both parents to give you a little a. All right, so let's look at PKU. All right, so Tim is a carrier for PKU. So he is big A, little a, because that's the genotype of a carrier, a heterozygote. But his partner, repeat, but his partner, wait, Tim is a carrier, but not, what? Okay, so Tim is a carrier. His partner, um... Let's say his partner has, because I don't know what I typed there. That was his partner has PKU. So his partner is going to be big A, little a. So let's go ahead and let's do this. So his partner or has, P, has PKU is going to be little a, little a. Sorry about that. So Tim is a carrier. His partner has it. So this is Tim, big A, little a. His partner has PKU. Okay, so I messed up with my sentence there. Okay, so if we fill this in, the big A comes down, and these boxes over here are all going to be little a's. So the little a's come over, and the little a's go down. So what percent will have PKU? Well, it's going to be this 50%. They will have, have PKU. And then this 50%, these two boxes will be normal. So they will not have PKU. And remember, if you have PKU, you have to have, you have to eat as a vegetarian. And you have to take uh, injections of an of a enzyme that you do not have because there's a mutation in the gene that makes the enzyme. So they have to be vegetarian and they have to have an injection once every seven to ten days or so for their entire life. It is by law, every child born in this country will be tested to see if they have PKU. It's just a law. Okay, so that you'll you'll know right away. Yeah, PKU. Okay, so here, Jose is a carrier for PKU. So we know that carriers are big A, little a. Laura doesn't have the PKU alleles. So that means she is this. Okay, so if we do the Punnett square... Again, it doesn't matter where we put the parents. I'm just going to do this. So the carrier is here. Laura doesn't have the PKU allele. She's over here. And we fill it in. Okay. What goes in this box right here? Big A, little a. What goes in this box over here? Big A, little a. And we have this. So, what percent of offspring will have PKU? Well, PKU is a recessive disease. So, that's going to be 0%. Because a recessive disease, both parents have to give you the alleles for you to get it. Okay. So, let's look at dominant disease. Okay, there's only one dominant disease you have to know, and that is Huntington's. So, in a dominant disease, remember, hunting, the mutation is in the dominant allele, and we use the EOC uses H for Huntington's because it's the name of a man, the first patient who had it. It only one parent has to give it to you for you to get it because it is a dominant disease. 
There can be no carriers in a dominant disease. And those that are born big H, big H. So if each parent gives them the Huntington mutated gene, they die. So anyone who's alive and having children that has Huntington's is always a heterozygote. Okay, so Jolene has Huntington's. So she's not going to be big H, big H because they die. She's going to be big H, little H. Her partner doesn't have the alleles. So here we have to think opposite. If you do not have the Huntington's alleles, are you big H, big H or little H, little H? Okay. Since Huntington's is dominant, you are little h, little h, if you do not have the alleles. So we're going to do our Punnett square. And, okay, so we've set up our Punnett square. What goes in this box? Whoops, that should be a little h. What goes in this box over here? What goes in this box here, and then this box here. Now, the question says, what percent chance do their children have of being born with Huntington's? Well, it's a capital letter. The dominant H is mutated because this is a dominant disease. So that means that this, these two boxes will be born with Huntington's. So 50% will have Huntington's, 50% won't. Now, we do have a blood test for Huntington's, so you can be tested to find out if you have it, if it runs in the family. And if it runs in your family, you know because people have and have died from Huntington's. Okay. Now, both Alice and Jake have Huntington's. So we know they're not big H, big H, because they die. So they are both big H, little h. So we do the Punnett squares and we fill this in. So what goes in this box? Okay, this box. Okay, so what percent of their offspring will have a chance of being born with the disease, and this is ugly. The answer is 75% chance. Huntington's, remember from your video notes yesterday, Huntington's is a slow, painful death. The most painful way to die of a human that I know of, because it takes like 20 years to kill you. So this is a very, very difficult disease. If this were a couple that you knew, what would you tell them about having children? In this country, you're free to have children if you want. But would you want to have children knowing that they had a 75% chance to have the disease? And this box here, 25% of them are going to die shortly after birth. So they're going to lose their children. So if this were me personally, I would say no, have not to have kids. But of course, in this country, you have a choice. Now, the ending here is just a quick matching because you have, you've had some classwork time. So, which disease deals with mucus? What's the mucus disease? Mucus is C, cystic fibrosis, abbreviated, C, whoops, C, wow, CF. What's the blood disease? Most of y'all know that already. That's the sickle cell has a disease with the blood. What's the only dominant disease? Dominant. That is Huntington's and that's always capitalized because that is the name of the first patient who was diagnosed with the disease. And PKU must eat a vegetarian diet. Okay, they have to eat that vegetarian diet or they run through their enzymes too quickly and the memory loss that occurs with PKU when it's out of control is significant. Okay, I had a friend in college with this disease. She had to relearn her all the information she learned the first semester of her freshman year of college because 
PK, you took it. Unfortunately, she also lost her memory. She will never remember her high school prom or high school graduation because the, the memory loss from the PKU took it out. She can look at pictures of herself, but she'll never remember it. Those memories, the life memories are gone forever. All right, this hopefully this helps and you're going to have classwork next to work on.